key and we won't harm you. The key. Let's get out of here. Fell off the tower, sir. Who is he? Here are his papers. Dr. Charles Behrens, Chief of the United Nations Medical Relief Organization. Did he say anything? No, sir. July, 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 eight, eighteenth, one. Madam, have your coffee white or black? Black, please. How long will it be before we reach the border? We shall be in Arstadt in about half an hour. Madame's journey ends there? No. I'm going on to Nassam on the other side. Is there any reason why I shouldn't? No, madame. No reason at all. Madame likes some sugar. No, thank you.
coffee black or white, sir? Black. Sugar, sir? No, thank you. Waiter, would you give this to the young lady sitting down there? From the gentleman over there. Women are like butterflies. The more beautiful and exquisite they are, the harder they are to secure. May I offer you a liqueur, Mr. Owen? You know my name? A little trick. To enjoy life, one must do a lot of little tricks. I have acquired the ability to read upside down. I read your card before you sent it to the attractive young lady. I hope you don't mind. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Harold Zabo. Pleased to meet you, Mr. Zabo. You're not British by any chance, Mr. Owen? No, I'm an American. Yes, she's very attractive. She could be a princess, or a spy, or even that exotic personage of the special agent movies. A beautiful criminal. Message from your agent aboard the Paris Nassim Express. Ah, oh, the waiter. Yes, sir. Read it. Batman Harold Zavo, aboard with syndicated reporter Richard Owen, American International Press. Commander Frontier Control, Ferrer here. Close all the borders now until 6 a.m. tomorrow. Frontier Bridge, railway station, the lot. I want 10 of my best men at the station to search for anyone who even remotely resembles a fat man. July 18th, the One-Eyed Soldiers. Dying words of Dr. Charles Barnes, Chief of United Nations Medical Relief Organization, mystify investigators in the Mediterranean Duchy of Nassam. You did not bring the key. You have one chance left. July 18th, the One-Eyed Soldiers. What do they mean? You do not know? Your deathbed is softer than Dr. Barrens's. <laughs> that is what will happen to you if you ever fail me again. My name is Richard Owen. I'm an American reporter on my way to replace a colleague in Nassau. It's quite urgent, really. I was wondering if you could help. My government is democratic even to Americans. We will arrange the same accommodations for you. It's quite important I get there tonight. As a government officer, it is my duty to tell you that the offering of bribes 
is a criminal offense. Of course it is. But I'm sure there must be some charity. I'll let you be the judge. About a quarter of a mile down the road from the station, there are some cars for hire. If you pay the right price, maybe one of the drivers will help you. Anything wrong? An American newspaper reporter, sir. Allow me to introduce myself, Mr. Owen. My name is Colonel Ferrer. Can I assist you in any way? Yes, it's quite important I get across the border tonight. I realize your position, but I was hoping there could be an exception. My government has closed the border tonight to everyone. There will be no exceptions. Tomorrow morning, you may proceed with the others. You're an officer from the other side of the border? That is correct. Now, if you'll excuse me. Just a minute, Colonel Ferrer. Ferrer. Whatever your name is. I'm going across the border tonight, whether you like it or not. Mr. Owen, I find your behavior a little odd. I would be very careful if I were you. Meaning? Did something upset you on the train tonight? Such as? A fat man who interests me. Fat man? Yes, a fat man. One should be very careful of such men. To grow fat, they must be cunning. Thank you, Colonel. Mr. Owen. Don't look around, they might be watching you. And the girl who refused your drink on the train. I don't know what you're hiding from, but I suggest you stop making it so obvious and come on out here and walk alongside of me as though we were old friends. Now, what's your problem? You intend to cross the border tonight. Please take me with you, I won't be a nuisance. I must cross the border tonight. Please. You know, of course, it's illegal to try to cross the border tonight. Miss, uh... Gava. Gava what? It's not important. Why is it so important to get across the border tonight? Like you, I have my reasons. What makes you think I want to get across the border? I saw you ask the officer. All right. We'll give it a try. Let's go into town. We'll get a taxi. so worried, you know. If the police catch up to us, I'm we'll sorry. just tell them. I just think I let my imagination run away with me. me. 
Now, what's this all about? They mean to get you and anyone with you. My companion is holding the entrance, but not for us to stand here and argue. Now, you tell me what you're up to. Where'd the girl go? I don't know. But look, I don't intend to stand around here and get killed. Come on, move out. I agree with you. There comes a time in everybody's life, Mr. Owen, when you have to trust someone. Now, this is such a time. I have a proposition to make. For different reasons, we both desire the secret of the one-eyed soldiers. Now, you have youth and strength, and you want an exclusive story. I have age and wisdom and uh, transport. <laughs> Excellent transport. <laughs> What's in it for you? Well, uh, that, unfortunately, I cannot divulge just now. What about the girl? Yes, fat man. What about the girl? Mr. Owen, do as I say. Walk over to the taxi, get inside, tell him to drive you to the nearest hotel. When he goes by here, tell him to slow down. And Mr. Owen, I'm an excellent shot. How to get across the border without passing the guards? No. The bridge is the only the way across the river. How do the smugglers get across? All you taxi drivers know. I'm an honor citizen of the Republic. The police will deal severely with you for this. Just be quiet. Turn up there. Pull up. A way across the river for 200 marks or a bullet in your head? No. I have a wife and three children. He doesn't know. I didn't ask for your opinion. Get out. Please, I... If you spare me, I promise not to tell anyone what happened. Why do you always smile? So, what do I do? Either get mad, grab the wheel and force you to tell me what's going on. Or I sit back, try to see the humor in it. And maybe eventually I'll find out. Or perhaps you would just tell me voluntarily. There's a car behind us without lights.
all right? Yes. Here. Drink this. Thank you. Feel better? Now, who is that in the car following us? The dwarf. Twisted shape of death. He doesn't exist in the world you know. Only for those who have fear in their hearts. There's a legend which says... the last shape that thousands of men saw in the prison camps was... his. But we are grown-ups now. And dwarfs are funny little men to laugh at at circuses. Let's go now. All right. But I'll drive. Is this the road to the border? Mm-hmm. Then you know the area. Yes. Then you lead the way. There's an entrance to a villa over this rise. Just past is the driveway. Pull in there so the taxi cannot be seen from the road. There's the border. On this side is the east control point. On the other side is Trutgen, the west control point. Look, Colonel Ferrer. Who are you, Geva? And why is it so important you get across the border? If someone's trying to kill you, it's better to tell the police now. The police? You offered to help me and you talk like an idiot. Don't you realize what's been happening for the last hour? Your life, my life means nothing to them. The police and everybody wants Charles Bear in secret to the one-eyed soldiers. Why is everyone looking for you? I can't tell you. And anyway, we'll never get across now. Yes, we will. We'll go through with the pilgrims in the morning. Yes, they'll never think of looking for us here hiding in comfort. Here? In this villa? It's a summer house of some friends of my father. They're never here during this time of year. All right. Close that door and I'll turn on the light. Now we'll see if we can find some place to rest. a hobby horse. Comfortable? Mm hmm Very. See if I can find myself a place. Take this room. I'll stay oh, in the no, other. Oh, Richard, it's only for one night. Well, I'm going to go and take a bath. I'll fix you one when I'm finished, all right? Thank you.
were you looking for? I don't know. I just wanted to make sure about you. Why? Because I need somebody to trust. I just want to be sure. Please believe me. Why should I believe you? I don't even know your name. All right, I'm going to tell you. But you must promise me that you won't say this to anybody or print anything. All right. I'm Giva Barons. Giva Barons, July the 18th, the One-Eyed Soldiers. I know that if anyone understands the meaning of these words, it's Charles Barron's daughter Giva. We must not lose her again. Everybody knows that tomorrow is July 18th, Feast of San Rafael. But the One-Eyed Soldiers, I never heard of them. Well, that's what we got to find out. Will you help me? We'll work it out. Together? Together. I'm sorry I searched your bag. It's all right. I'm sorry I kidnapped you. I'm not. Good night, Richard. Good night. Thank you again. I'm so sorry I got you into all this. There's no need to be sorry. I came into it with my eyes wide open, remember? Look. I'm sure your story of Dr. Behrens and his uh, one-eyed soldiers won't be too late. You, out! Get that man out! Passport. Sir, over here! 
is it? There's a jeep. Stop her. Take that bicycle away. Hey, hey, what are you doing? Why you take my bike away? Why you take away my bike? You won't be needing it again, fat man. What? If you think that disguise hides you, you'd better think again. I'd recognize that fat pot belly of yours miles away. How dare you talk to me like that? I used to live up at the castle. I was the Duke's chambermaid. Zavor, these strange stories won't help you, you know. I've never been so close to you before. I've never realized how ugly you were. Ugly? Man, let's see you. Oh, oh, oh. Madam, I cannot tell you how sorry I am. We thought you were a fat man, a, a notorious criminal. A man? Me? Who has had five sons, 25 grandsons, three husbands, all dead, and seven lovers? All right. Yes, thank you. Give up. When I turn this next corner here, I'll slow down and you jump out. You don't think I'm going to run away and leave you? It's the only chance we've got. Otherwise, they're going to catch us both. Oh, Richard, please let me stay. Just do as I say. All right, then jump behind that bush. Hurry.
Ganta never misses. You fool, Gunther. Now we cannot find out where the girl is. No, don't shoot me. She can't be far away. Quick! She must be around here someplace. Home all this area. Leave nothing out. And get her alive. Understand? Alive. Draghi, stay with the jeep. Keep your eyes open. They're like vultures. They can smell a corpse miles away. Good morning, officers. From you, Harry, I gather that there is some trouble. Can I be of any assistance? You've got one customer for certain, and another probably. You didn't. You didn't really imagine that we're undertakers. <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea? No, sir. I am Professor Harold Zavor, Professor of Physical Medicine, Nassam University. Oh, the explanation for the hearse is quite simple. I had an important specimen to collect. I have to do it early in the morning because of my, uh, lecture commitments. Now, sir, can I be of service? Oh, he's dead. Is he dead? Oh, yes, quite, quite dead, Inspector. I'm not even a sergeant. Never mind an inspector. Really? All such fine-looking men should be inspectors. I hasten the day. Now, might I ask how this has occurred? Foreigners from across the border. I see. Well, since your officers won't have had time to make arrangements for the removal of the bodies, I shall be glad to oblige. Let's go to report to Colonel Ferrer. Do you know where our morgue is, Professor? Yes, of course, of course. If I might permit myself a joke in the worst possible taste, I carve there every other Sunday. <laughs> we will meet there later. Twenty-five grandchildren, three husbands, seven lovers. Madam, you've, uh, you've told me that at least a dozen times, madam. If there's anything I can do to prove how sorry I am, I will do it. Well, perhaps you would permit me to prove to you that I am a woman. Sir? Report from Sergeant Car Number 23, sir. No sign of the jeep with two bodies found on the west wall. Uh, tell him I'm on my way. Uh, excuse me, madam. Uh, duty calls. Hey, wait a minute. Search the whole area. Is this where it happened? Yes, sir. Then where are the bodies? The doctor took them to the morgue. Now, what are you talking about, man? Dr. Savo, the fat man. The fat man? Yes, sir. Savo. Quickly, sir, over here. There is a body in the water behind the barge. So, the doctor took the bodies to the morgue, did he? Well, that's what he said, sir. You bloody oaf. I've been after that man for ten years.
When I finish with you, you will wish I had killed you now. You hold the secret. The secret that you will give to me. Maybe not right away, but before you die, you will tell me the secret of the one-eyed soldiers. Oh. What is it you want from me? Fifteen million dollars. Your dream. Yes, it's a dream. But it's a dream that we could share together, you and I. You're not only dreaming, you've lost your mind. I not only don't have fifteen million dollars, I've never even seen fifteen million dollars. Now, just what business are you in? I, sir? I've been living with crime for the last twenty years. Most inspiring. So far, I've been contented and little vicious, but, uh, well, contented is perhaps the wrong word. I have been patient. You see, Mr. Owen, I am a big man. I was cut out for great things. I have a great appetite, ambitions, yes, dreams. And how does this tomb fit into your scheme? An excellent little hideout with companions who keep their mouths shut and keep the curious away. You know, Mr. Owen, in 20 years, I've discovered that for some odd reason, the police show the greatest reverence and respect for the dead. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I make use of that little idiosyncrasy. Whenever I have a border to cross like today, I am an undertaker. <laughs> it's as simple as that. Who would want to pull a coffin and peer into it? Or follow a corpse into a tomb? No. Here you could rest in peace forever. How would you like to try it on your side? Hold it! to make mistakes, Mr. Earl. Now, you've listened to me, fat man. You just made me kill him. I want some answers from you, and I want them fast, without any fast talk or frills. What am I mixed up in? Do you know Antonio Caporelli? I should. I've written enough stories about him. He's the head of a crime syndicate. Have you ever seen him? No. Few people have. Do your stories include his term of office at Poncello, the prison camp in Salerio? It was he who cut off my late friend's ears and ripped out his tongue. You know him? Yes, I do, sir. He is the dwarf. What? Very few people know that. I am one of them. Recently, Caporelli had a money problem. Not to acquire it, of course, but how to spend it. To spend a few thousands on the side is easy, but his troubles were in millions. And that sort of money takes a lot of hiding when you can't put it into a bank or in shares or into anything that can be investigated by the tax man. Now, to leave such a lot of money lying about is not only useless, it's dangerous. So their solution was Switzerland, where a man can deposit large sums without giving a name or identity, only a key. Now, the next question was how to get the money to Switzerland unobserved. That's when Barron's entered the picture. He was working for the United Nations, a trusted and respected man with excellent opportunities as a diplomatic courier immune from customs and other examination. Why would he get mixed up in something like that? Oh, blackmail. The syndicate found out some secret about his past. Then came his moment of truth, and he rebelled against them. So they killed him. But they, they didn't find the key. The last words that Baron spoke must have been a clue to the whereabouts of that key. 18th of July, the one-eyed soldiers. And you're asking me to believe that all I need to pick up $15 million is a key. All you need to enjoy everlasting life is a beating heart. How do you know all this? I, like you, Mr. Reporter, never reveal my sources. All right. 
There's one way to find out. I'm sure that a man with 20 years' experience in crime can show me the way to the closest police department. The police? Do you really think they would believe you? <laughs> you have been involved in an armed hold and in a gang fight in which, oh no, that would mean a lot of explaining, my friend. <laughs> Colonel Ferrer would never believe that. I know him of old. His main ambition in life is to lock me into that dirty jail of his. So far, he has not succeeded, but he's persistent. He keeps on trying. <laughs> no, my friend, your only chance is to throw your lot in with mine. We need each other. Why do you need me? The secret of the one-eyed soldiers. I don't know anything about the one-eyed soldiers. But the girl does. Gave a bearing. No, no, she doesn't. I've already been through that with her. She might think that she doesn't, but in fact, she does. Her father's message was for her. Somewhere deep inside her, maybe from long ago in the past, lies the secret. She was the only one her father trusted. He meant her to know. All right. Suppose she does know. What good's it going to do you? But that's why I need you, my friend. She trusts you. She will allow you to help her to find the secret. If she can, that is. If Caporelli hasn't already got it. Caporelli. I've got to get to Nassau. Huh? To get to Nassau. What do I need you for? But you're a marked man. Every policeman, every gangster will be looking for you. But they won't be looking for you in that. That's an idea. All right, fat man. You drive me to Nassau. But don't you forget I've got the gun. Ah, yes, the gun. <laughs> well, I had to make sure that I can trust you. So I left it where I was sure you'd find it. Because you see, Mr. Owen, in my experience, a man with a gun always speaks the truth. It's uh, loaded with blanks. Oh. That's out there. We must be patient. I'm going to give you another five minutes, and then I'm coming out of this box whether you like it or not. <laughs> How about this one, lady? Now, what would you like to buy? It's, yeah, this I one's very nice. <laughs> And follow me. Ah, I thought you weren't interested. We are the police. Shut that door. What do you want here? I have done nothing. Be quiet. We are not concerned with you so long as you keep quiet and stay in this room. Yes, Excellency. Anything you say. Look, over there. Let's go. Look. Never mind. I'll have it for fight. Who's in there? A customer. Only a customer. Get out, you rotten pigs! I beg your pardon, madame. What an interesting subterfuge, Mr. Owen. And the fat man? 
He's out running across a rooftop somewhere. I thought it'd be better to stay here and try to bluff my way through rather than get shot at. Ah, perhaps this time, Mr. Owen, we can have that little chat without you suddenly running off and disappearing. Good, very good. And you were very good too. I never expected to find the fat man under the bed. <laughs> I'll show you a sense of humor later. Right now, there's too much happening. Congratulate you on the treasure beyond compare, but just now we have other treasures to look for. Just now we have to get out of here. Richard, I think I've almost got the answer. The answer to what? The hunch, a picture I've been putting together from little pieces somewhere in my childhood. I think I know where they are. The one-eyed soldiers. You'll tell me, Miss Barons, won't you? You'll tell me the secret of the one-eyed soldiers. There is very little time, Miss Barons. Answer my question or I shall demonstrate how painful I can make it for you. For all of you. Leave him to me! them back.
for the last time, Miss Barons. The one-eyed soldiers. This is an ancient Roman chamber. The Romans used to bring their slaves here to punish them or torture them, to get information, secrets. There is everything here for that. The Romans were most thorough. They got what they wanted. All right, Miss Barons. We will start with the whip. Tie her up. There. My gun there, Caporelli. As usual, it is loaded with blanks. far enough. Now we're going to the police before somebody else gets killed. But don't you realize how close we are to the 15 million? I don't care about the 15 million. You were the one that gave me all that bunk about a beating heart and everlasting life. Well, I'll settle for a beating heart, but I want to die in bed and I want the same thing for Gaber. But until we get it, many more people will die. It is not until there is no more reason to kill that we shall all be safe. Richard, he's right. Besides, my father wanted me to know and find the key, so I must. All right. All right, but let's get out of here. Caporetta could be anywhere. Which way? To the catacombs. One-eyed soldiers. But these have two eyes, not one. There must be another chamber somewhere. Can you remember anything else, Gaba? Richard, I remember. When I was a little girl, my father used to take me somewhere where I was afraid I would fall. He used to hold my hand very tight and lead me to this place, and then say, turn around, Gava, and see the miracle of Saint Raphael. And there below me were the one-eyed soldiers. That's it. That's where we used to stand.
Richard. The one-eyed soldiers. It's amazing. Somewhere they're picking up a reflection that gives them the appearance of having only one eye. But just from this one spot. Fascinating little gathering. Well, I'm sorry to have to tell you you're finally under arrest. Do you know who this girl is? Naturally. Good afternoon, Miss Barons. But it's just that this is hardly the place for a chat, is it? Uh, shall we go? Well, Zappo, it seems that at last I'm going to be able to lock you in my dirty jail, as you call it. The key. Key? What key? I know nothing about a key. Have I done anything wrong, Excellency? He hasn't, you know. And he's done everything he could to try to find Baron's murder. And in the process, not only risked his own life, but saved ours as well. Dr. Baron's murderer? Who said he was murdered? I don't know why you're playing dumb, Colonel. You know as well as I do that Baron's was murdered by a member of the Caporelli Syndicate. And Caporelli, who incidentally is a dwarf, is somewhere in this square right now. Yes, Mr. Owen, I know all about the Syndicate and all about the key. But Caporelli? Nobody's ever seen him. And yet you expect me to believe he's a dwarf? If one of your men makes a move, sir, I'll kill you. I want two things. First, put that man and that woman out in front of me, alone. Then send the fat man up with one of your men unarmed. He has the key in his pocket. When you do that, I'll tell you what to do next. Quit stalling, Pharrell! Your time is running out! Caporelli, you've only limited ammunition in that gun. You can't kill us all at once. The moment you open fire, my men will kill you. And since your father's death, the key is yours until the court decides otherwise. I don't want the money. Richard, I'm sure you would understand, but I couldn't possibly enjoy something which caused my father's death. Here. 
I hope it will bring better luck to you. You mean you want me to keep it? Oh, my friend, you are lucky. You have discovered a jewel beyond compare. A woman of great beauty and a great heart. Goodbye, my friend. Goodbye, fat man. And you too, my dear. Mr. Savo. For the reasons that these two people are obviously unwilling to give evidence, I am unable to bring any charges against you for the many serious crimes you've committed. Nevertheless, there are certain, uh, some technical points on which I could keep you in my dirty jail for some years to come. However, if you had an associate who could deal with any small problems that might arise, uh, preferably a senior police officer, I think you would be in a happier position. I see. Uh, well, it's an association I had not anticipated, but in the circumstances, it's uh, not entirely unwelcome. I'm afraid you both will have to remain in custody for another 48 hours to give us time to uh, complete our arrangements. Your story on the front page might be an embarrassment, but I promise to let it remain with you exclusively. That's very kind of you, Colonel. Ha, ha, ha. 